What's going on guys, National Master James Canty the third here and today we're covering Botvinnik versus Tal. One of my favorite players is Tal, of course. Um, so let's get right into it guys. Botvinnik versus Tal, we got the forward chess app here. Before we get started, hit the follow button, subscribe, share this video, all the other stuff guys. Welcome. This is the forward chess app, so I will leave a link for you guys to use this. But this is Botvinnik, uh, Mikhail Botvinnik versus Mikhail Tal. World Championship return match, Moscow 1961. Let's go, so let's see what happens. C4, and knight of six, knight C3. So we got an English here, E6 and D4. After D4, bishop B4 and A3. So this actually turned into a uh, Nimzo Indian, the A3 variation is what they like to call it. So uh, I was a fan of this for black and after taking here, because usually I would play this from the black side, B takes C3 and then B6. I've played this a long time, um, just under the tutelage of Roman DG Hasvili. I learned a lot from him, and this is what he he uh, preferred. B6, playing bishop A6 is our goal. Playing knight C6 and knight A5 and bullying the C4 pawn. I had a lot of success with this with black. So after F3, which is the most common move here, um, uh, proceeding to occupy the center, bishop A6 hit the C4 pawn, and then after E4, you usually would go knight to C6 here. But what Tau did was d5. It says this says that this is a positional mistake, allowing white to immediately get rid of the c4 pawn. Uh, and then it says already then I knew that knight c6 gives black a good game. And then after bishop d3, knight a5, queen e2, d6. Yep, this is all Roman stuff. Followed by queen d7, queen a4. This is correct. I know this very well. Very well. So, but he played d5 here, which is interesting, and I got him in trouble actually. So, after c takes d5, bishop takes f1, and king takes f1 here. You would think that white's king is in trouble, or like this position is not as good for white, but you'd be surprised, guys. This king is actually pretty safe here on f1. E takes d5, and bishop to g5. Now, this is a typical thrust, and at the same time, a strong novelty. Now, I was expecting to previously play e5, knight g8, knight e2, queen d7. Followed by knight c6, castle queen side with equality. But he played bishop g5 here is actually what um what Bot Vinick played. So after bishop g5, let's see what happened. We have b6, no, h6. He said that was not that good either. The lesser evil was taking the pawn. So after h6, queen a4 check, which is a big boy move apparently. White follows a clear strategic course. He's conducting the game with great power. Says he avoids bishop takes f6, queen takes. E takes castles knight e2. Oh, I like I like white here. Let's see what happens. Rook d8, c4. Although black may not have full conversation for the pawn here. Yeah, I understand that. So after queen a4, we have c6 from uh, black here from tau. C6 and then bishop h4. So we backed it up. And then the king's in the center. So let's see if we can take advantage of that. D takes e4 and here we go. Bam, rook e1. There it is. It's about to get real. Rook to e1. The king is in the center. But castling, like he didn't castle. He played g5. Is it like, let's let's see what the engine says. Like, what happens? Are you getting crushed if you play castle? Let's see. Oh, you're not getting crushed. Yeah. Most likely, you just castle in this position. And then F takes E4. Knight F3. Look at the king placement here. It's pretty interesting king placement. Pretty interesting. Okay, so let's go back. Rookie 1 and G5. It says an enforced weakening and then Bishop F2, which is a knight. I like Bishop F2. Bishop G3, though. If bishop g3, queen d5, this was inaccurate. Really, is that is it that bad? I mean, queen d5 doesn't look that bad, bro. But I guess so. Bishop to f2 is what he played instead. And after queen to e7, we have knight to e2. I'm going to g3, I'm going to f5, I'm going to hit the e4 pawn, I'm hitting everything. Knight to e2, b5, queen c2, and queen takes a3. All right, taking a look at this position, I love white's position. What would I play next? Knight to g3 just stands out. Pawn takes e4, you could do pawn takes. Let's see what he play. Oh, h4, wow. h4, guy. That is amazing. Play in the grand manner. This is the style of the champion. It's time to bring the h1 rook into the battle. Dang, h4. So he's starting to take on g5, obviously, and the rook is undefended back here. So then it was G takes H4, very bad move. It says a, a negligent move, indicating Tao's indifferent form in this match. Black breaks up his own position. He should have made the difficult choice between the other replies, Rig G8 and G4. Interesting. So G takes F4, Bishop takes H4. The Bishop comes into play with decisive force and Black's position becomes hopeless. Let's see it. 
Hal is the man, but let's see what happens. Knight B to D7, Knight G3, and get out the way. Ooh, I mean, I'm okay. Not really, but I'm okay. El Castle queen side. Knight takes E4. Okay, Rook H to E8. Typical Tau chance is what it says. Ooh, there's a piece hanging. There's a piece hanging, and Tau, first off. Okay, let's, get, let's, let's backtrack. There's a piece hanging, and Tau... Is, is giving it up. Do you take this piece? You don't even think twice about it. That answer is a no. We're not taking f6. So <laughs> let's see what happens actually. Rook hj. Okay, so let's see. Another move. He played king f2, but if knight takes f6 without even thinking, thinking takes, takes queen a1, queen d1, queen takes, king f1, knight e5. With unclear complications. Of course. Of course he's looking for this kind of stuff. I'm up a piece, but now you're looking all crazy. Like, the rook's out the game. This is insane. He always goes for this, bro. This is the type of chess I play all the time. King f2 is what he played. He's like, you know what, Tal? We're not going this round. We're just not about to do that. So he just played king f2. Let me, you can have it, bro. King f2. King f2. I'm going to just win the simple way. Knight takes e4. F takes f6. Rook a1. Ooh, that queen looking nasty. A7 hanging too. Rookie seven, snap. Uh oh. Oh, we got some trouble. Queen takes e4. You might need to take that queen. And he did. And yeah, he took the queen. Because that queen, like, is going to wreak havoc if we don't. And the rook a8. And now we got into an end game. Of course, Tao made the best of this position here. Definitely made the best of this position. Bishop g3. But he's just in trouble, though. Like, man, look at all this pressure. Yeah, this is just out. Rook to c8. Rook check. Oh, my goodness. This is gross. Uh, Take on b8? Isn't that just winning? Yeah, that's it. And then it says b4. And then if you have to play b4 after this, you know it's over. Because the idea, guys, was just mate, right? Bishop takes b8, rook takes, rook mate. Nice by, by uh, Bot Vinic. So check. Bishop takes b4, and he just backed that boy up. And then Tao made another move like it was going to work. I mean, yeah, I'm just keep moving, bro. Check. And then he blocked him off because it's going to be made on a5. Rick A4. And then after the game, it says, for the first time in my life, I was knocked out in the opening. <laughs> That's funny, bro. Tao said that. Tao was like, for the first time in my life, I was knocked out in the opening. He didn't like that too much. But that was an amazing game, actually. Just from the beginning here, guys, that was pretty good. Uh, it, was, it was actually excellent. Tao just made a mistake out of the opening. If you are a Nimzo Indian player, guys, do not play D5 in this position. Do not play d5 in this position. Knight c6 is the best move. I'll flip the board here. I used to play this a lot. Knight c6 is the best way to play. And you're going to follow up with knight a5 and uh, d6 and bringing the queen from d7 to a4 and play in that manner. But uh, actually, if we look at it again, bishop a6, he played d5 here, which that's what they want. d5 is usually never good. And after bishop takes, if you look at it from black's point of view, you seem kind of fine. But at the end of the day, you're actually not. Bishop g5. As we saw, looking at it from Black's point of view here, I mean, look at this. We don't even have a bishop, really, but our king's in the center. It feels like it's kind of equal, but yeah, you need precision here, especially after rookie one. It's looking kind of scary. Stuff is hanging here. And that was amazing to see, actually, from Bot Vinic, able to win this uh, return championship match here, or at least this game, and, uh, and win that. He beat Tal here. To beat Tao. So yeah, honestly, if Tao just messed up out of the opening too, he said he was knocked out in the opening. That's what he said. But he played D5. And, I, you know, he just got, uh, Bob and it just took advantage of it like he was supposed to do, guys. So remember, if you're going to play this Nimzo, don't play D5. And learn from Bob and Nick that if they do play D5, or if you do have the pressure, make sure you just break up the position like when this rookie one stuff happened here. After Bishop G5, then we have H6, Queen A4, and then Bishop H4 and rookie one. That's very nice, right? Rookie one is it's uh, the kings are safe. There's no bishop to go on this diagonal. The rooks is, is doing some damage here in the file on the file. And g5 was very aggressive, but we backed it up. And then we ended up playing this h4 move, guys. Keep the attacks up. h4 was very strong, sealing the deal. And uh, Tao was kind of looking crazy in that game. So Bopfenik did his thing, guys. That's what's up. We just watched Bopfenik here. We're going to put this in the World Championship section. Make sure you guys check out all the World Championship videos I put in there. We got more content coming. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'm National Master James Canty III. Hit the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next video.